Good morning and welcome to Storytime at Hickory Public Library. My name is Lisa. I'm the children's librarian here and I've got some good stories for you today. But we're going to start with our hello song and it has two signs in it. One is hello, which is kind of like a salute. You put your hand to your forehead and then up and out. And the second sign is friends. So we have two friends and they hug. That's a good thing for friends, right? Hug. <laughs> so the song goes, hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. <laughs> My first book is a good one. It's called Too Many Frogs. And it's written by Sandy Asher. And the pictures are by Keith Graves. That's a lot of frogs. Is that a frog? No, it's a blue rabbit. <laughs> rabbit lived by himself in the hollow of an old tree. He cooked for himself. He tidied up after himself. And at the end of each and every day, he read himself a story. It was a simple way of life. No fuss, no clutter. And that's the way Rabbit liked it. But one rainy evening, he heard a knock, knockity knock at his door. It's froggy, croaked the voice. Don't care for this storm. Rabbit opened the door. Uh, I was just about to read myself a story. Ooh, love to listen, Froggy cried, and he hopped right inside the house. You don't mind, do you? I uh, suppose not, said Rabbit. So Froggy listened while Rabbit read his story. Well done, he cheered when Rabbit had finished. Storm's ended too. Thanks for your kindness. Doodle -doo. The next evening, as usual, Rabbit finished his dinner, tidied up, and sat down to read himself a story. But before he could even begin, he heard another knock, knockity knock at his door. It's Froggy, croaked that same voice. Rabbit opened the door. Uh, I was just about to read myself a story. I know, Froggy cried, and he hopped right inside. Love to listen, but first, let's fix ourselves a snack. Or two or three. Don't mind, do you? Uh, well, I suppose not, said Rabbit. So Froggy hopped and popped and whipped and flipped and mixed and fixed a snack or two or three. Too much fuss, thought Rabbit. But Froggy listened while Rabbit read his story. Well done, Froggy cheered when Rabbit had finished. Snack's gone too. <clears throat> Thanks for your kindness. Toodaloo! And off he went. <clears throat> The next evening, Rabbit finished his dinner, tidied up, and sat down to read himself another story. But before he could begin, there was that same knock, 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 and he knock, <clears throat> at his door. It's Froggy, he croaked. Rabbit opened the door. I was just about to read, I know, Froggy cried, and he hopped right inside. About to read yourself a story, love to listen. But first, let's get ourselves all comfy cozy. <clears throat> you don't mind, do you? I suppose not, said Rabbit. So Froggy fluffed and puffed and mooshed and schmooshed and piled up billows and billows of pillows. Too much clutter, thought Rabbit. But Froggy listened while Rabbit read his story. Well done, he cheered when Rabbit had finished. Bedtime too. Thanks for your kindness. Doodle. -doo. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
The next evening, Rabbit finished dinner, tidied up, and sat down to read himself a new story. But before he could begin, knock, knockity knock, it's Froggy. Rabbit opened the door. <gasps> I know, Froggy cried before Rabbit could say a single word. You are about to read yourself a story. Love to listen. But first, meet the family. Been telling them all about you and your stories. Love to join us. Don't mind, do you? Rabbit looked at Froggy's family. Big frogs, little frogs, dozens and dozens of frogs, all wearing t-shirts that said, Frog Family Reunion. Too many frogs, he thought. Too much fuss, too much clutter. But I do mind, Froggy, he said. You do? Froggy asked. I never invited you in, Rabbit explained. I never invited you to fix a snack. I never invited you to get all comfy cozy. And I never invited your family to join you. So, yes, I do mind. I mind very much indeed. Uh-oh, croaked Froggy. This will never do. Thank you for your kindness. Toodaloo. Alone at last, Rabbit sat down to read himself a story. For one anxious moment, he waited for a knock, knock, and he knock at the door, but it never came. Don't mind, do you? He asked himself with a chuckle. Most certainly not, he answered himself, and he began to read. It was a good story. But something was missing. Hmm. Snacks make a story better, he thought. So he fixed himself a snack and sat down and read on. It was a very good story. But still something was missing. Pillows make a good story even better, he thought. So he fluffed himself a pillow and read on. It was an exceptionally good story. But something was still missing. Rabbit blinked once. He blinked twice. And then he sighed. <sighs> it's Froggy, he told himself. He loves to listen to stories. That's what's missing. Rabbit opened his door. There sat Froggy and his whole family, waiting patiently to say they were sorry. Never meant to be rude, Froggy said. Brought you a t-shirt. Frog family reunion. Thank you, Rabbit said. I was about to read a story. Would you like to join me? Love to listen, cried all the frogs. And in they all hopped. Big frogs, little frogs, dozens and dozens of frogs. Rabbit offered them a snack or two or three and helped them fluff up all the pillows. And then every single frog listened while Rabbit read a story. Well done, they cheered when he had finished. So many frogs, Rabbit thought. So much fuss, so much clutter. It was a different way of life. And Rabbit liked it. A good story is always better when it's shared. I have a couple of books about parties because it was my birthday last week. And of course I couldn't have a birthday party because we're not doing that these days. But I can read books about parties. This one is called Boa's Bad Birthday. I wouldn't want to have a, birth a boa at my birthday. And this is by Jeannie Willis and Tony Ross. It was Boa's birthday. It was going to be the best birthday ever. Or so he hoped. He invited his friends and they would all bring him presents. Or would they? 
orangutan's gift was enormous. Please don't let it be what I think it is, thought Boa. What does it look like? It's all wrapped up. It's a funny shape, isn't it? But it was a piano. A piano's a nice gift, right? But Boa couldn't play it. He had no fingers. It's the thought that counts, said his mother. Orangutan clearly hadn't thought very hard, but maybe Monkey had. He was clever, or was he? His parcel looked very interesting. You're gonna love it, said Monkey. But Boa didn't. It was a pair of sunglasses. Everyone's wearing them, said Monkey. They're very chic. But Boa couldn't wear them. They kept slipping off. He had no ears to hook them around and no nose to sit them on. Thanks, said Boa. They're lovely. But secretly, he was deeply disappointed. Third time's a charm, said his mother. Jaguar arrived with a neat package. I hope you like them, he said. Boa hoped so too. He could hardly wait to unwrap it. I thought they might be useful, said Jaguar, but they weren't. They were mittens. Where do you wear mittens? Do you like the color, asked Jaguar. It's my favorite color, said Boa. But what he really wanted to say was, why did you buy me mittens? Are you crazy? I have no hands. But that would have been rude. It was kind of his friends to get him anything at all. Perhaps Sloth's gift would be more suitable for a Boa. But it wasn't. It was a hairbrush. It's a very good one, insisted Sloth, my favorite. But it was no good for Boa. Do Boas have hair? No, none. Open my parcel, said Ant Eater. You'll have great fun with it. <laughs> but Boa did not have fun with it. It was a soccer ball. It was no fun at all. Boa couldn't kick it. He had no feet. <sighs> this was turning out to be Boa's worst, worst birthday ever. All of his gifts were rubbish. And just when he thought things couldn't get any worse, Dung Beetle's here, said his mother. I bet her present is a pile of you know what, thought Boa. What do you think might be? in here from a dung beetle. He was right, but he was also wrong because in that ball of dung, there was a seed and when it rained, it sprouted and it grew and it grew and it grew into a beautiful tree. It was the perfect present for Boa. It was just the right size, the right shape, and it suited Boa down to the ground. It was just what he had always wanted. Can you see Boa in that tree? See his little head right there? He could hide there forever. So if you ever get a present that stinks, just say thank you because it might turn out to be the best present ever. <laughs> Let's do a song. <clears throat> it's our bubble pop song. And it's got five numbers in it. 
Can you count five? One, two, three, four, five. And it's got five colors in it. And you're going to be a little fishy swimming in the water. So we start off with number one. And this color is red. So we have one little red fish swimming in the water, swimming in the water, swimming in the water. One little red fish swimming in the water. Bubble, 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 pop. Next comes two. And what color is this? That's right, yellow. Two little yellow fish swimming in the water, swimming in the water, swimming in the water. Two little yellow fish swimming in the water. Bubble, 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 pop. After two comes three. Oh, and the color is blue. Three little blue fish swimming in the water, swimming in the water, swimming in the water. Three little blue fish swimming in the water. Bubble, 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 pop. One, two, three, four. And it may not look like it, it depends. Colors look funny sometimes over screens, but this color is purple. Four little purple fish swimming in the water, swimming in the water, swimming in the water. Four little purple fish swimming in the water. Bubble, 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 pop. And last but not least, we have five. And this color is green. Five little green fish swimming in the water, swimming in the water, swimming in the water. Five little green fish swimming in the water. Bubble, 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 bubble pop. That's a fun song. Now I've got Xander's Panda Party by Linda C. Park. And the illustrations are by Matt Phelan. The illustrations are the pictures. And this is Panda. Xander, the panda, plan a panda party. Yes, a dandy whoop to do. But Xander was the only panda, just one panda at the zoo. Xander sat and chewed bamboo. He changed plans and point of view. Xander planned a bear affair and thought of all the bears he knew. He knew black bear, brown bear, both of the polar bears, and grizzly bear is a rock and roller. Koala is a little gozy, likes her tree all leafy cozy, but I'll ask her anyway. Surely she will want to play. Xander's party preparations took great pains and perspiration. The menu needs some taste sensation, plus the proper vegetation. Menu, berries, honey, bears like honey, fish, bears like fish too, grubs, eucalyptus leaves, and bamboo. Pandas eat bamboo. Xander handed out the cards, calling all bears, a celebration invitation, food and fun and conversation. From her tree, Koala hollered, but Xander, I am not a bear. Xander didn't understand her. Koala bear, you're not a bear? He stared at her in consternation. Sorry for the complication. I know I'm often called Koala bear but I'm not a bear. I swear, I'm a marsupial. Marsupials, we're rather rare. Will I not be welcome there? 
Xander fetched some more bamboo. He wasn't sure what he should do. He chewed a slew of new bamboo. He nibbled, gnawed, and thought things through. And he planned a hearty party. Fur or hair or hide can come. All the animals, everyone, calling all mammals a celebration invitation, food and fun and recreation. Soon rhinoceros that were. It may sound a bit absurd, but I won't come without my bird. Look at the birds that need to. Are birds mammals? Nope. Xander felt a little blue. He chewed bamboo, a stalk or two. He fidgeted and paced the floor, then scratched an itch and paced some more. Finally, a firm decision. Brent Xander's brand new party vision. All the birds and all the mammals, from whooping cranes to hybrid camels, Anyone with fur or feathers congregating all together, calling all mammals and birds a celebration invitation, food and fun and jubilation. Xander, said the crocodile with a most beguiling smile. There's a party, so I've heard. You've invited all the birds. Birds and reptiles long ago, we were related, don't you know? If you didn't, now you do. Can't the reptiles join in too? Xander didn't chew bamboo. Instead, he swithered in a stew. What to do? His worries grew. Was his party falling through? Then came a voice from down below somewhere near his little toe. Why don't you ask everyone? I can help you. We'll have fun. Nice to meet you, Xander Panda. I'm Amanda Salamander. Amanda Salamander lent a hand to Xander Panda. Xander's party plans went from grand to even grander. Look at all the invitations. He invited an elephant, pink flamingos. Looks like a goat. You know who this is. Big tall giraffe and turtles. Almost time to start the party. Then Amanda squeaked out, wait, what's that coming through the gate? A truck, a ramp, a wooden crate. What could be in that wooden crate? Xander didn't have a clue. He shook his head and wondered, who? Hello? Hello? And how are you? Georgie here. Please call me Ishu. I'm Amanda. My name's Xander. Did you say your name was Zoo? No, not Zoo. My name is Zhu. Like saying Zoo mixed up with Shu. In Chinese, zhuzhi means bamboo. And Xander knew just what to do. He gave her a piece of bamboo. What a party. What a ball. Lots of new friends, tall and small. Every creature at the zoo. Which means, of course, The humans, too. Would you like to go to a, a big animal party at the zoo? I think it would be fun. I got one more story. And it's my pizza cat. Pete's a very special cat, and not just because he's blue. Pete the cat and the missing cupcakes. And this one is by Kimberly and James D. Look at all these different kinds of cupcakes.
Pete and Gus were as busy as could be. They were getting ready for a cupcake party. It started at three. Looks like they're making cupcakes. They were making cupcakes for everyone. Pete and Gus counted them just for fun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten cupcakes. They had ten when they were done. Uh oh, hang on. Some of the cupcakes are gone. They were sure there had been 10. Maybe we need to count again, said Pete. Let's help him count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is less than 10. They counted the cupcakes lined up straight. Now there were only eight. It looked like someone had taken two. But who? Pete and Gus didn't know what to do. And then they found a clue. Gus said, look what I found. Sprinkles on the ground. I bet it was squirrel. Squirrel loves sprinkles. But squirrel said, wasn't me. Couldn't be. I've been at the spelling bee. Uh-oh. More cupcakes are missing. Come and see. This was too weird. Two more cupcakes had disappeared. Now there were only six. Someone must be playing tricks. But who? Pete and Gus didn't know what to do. And just then they saw another clue. Pete said, I bet it was alligator. He loves to eat. But alligator said, wasn't me. It couldn't be. I've been learning my ABC. Oh, no. Look at the cupcakes. More are missing. Come and see. Count the cupcakes. One, two, three. Four. Now there are only four cupcakes. Someone had taken two more. But who? Pete and Gus didn't know what to do. Just then, they found another clue. What's this? It's a ladder. And what do you use a ladder for? I bet it was turtle, said Pete. I know Turtle loves sweets. I think Turtle could climb that ladder. Turtle said, it wasn't me. It couldn't be. I've been swimming in the sea. Uh-oh. More cupcakes are missing. Come and see. What on earth is going on? All the cupcakes are now gone. There's not a single cupcake in the windowsill. Pete and Gus didn't know what to do. They started looking for another clue. They found Grumpy Toad with icing on his face. Pete and Gus had solved the case. I'm so sorry. It was me. I couldn't stop it with just one. I ate and ate till there were none. Everyone agreed Grumpy Toad would have to miss the fun. He could not come to the cupcake party after what he had done. Pete said, but wait, Grumpy Toad made a mistake, that's true. But he said he's sorry. Let's give him a second chance. That's what friends do. So Pete told Grumpy Toad that they would give him another chance. He was so excited he did a happy dance. He doesn't look grumpy anymore, does he? 
The night of the cupcake party was uh, so much fun. Grumpy Toad brought more than enough cupcakes for everyone. Look at Pete the Cat's birthday cupcake party. The end. Look at all those different cupcakes. Those are fun. There's a baseball. There's one with Pete on it. Cupcakes are yummy, aren't they? They're wonderful. Okay, it's time to say goodbye. And we're going to do it with our goodbye song, which is just like our hello song, except instead of saying hello, we say goodbye. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Bye. Thanks for coming. See you next time.